Philly. But in his last day, the mass is raising up the two pockets of Dallas. All great. All great. We're going to find out what's the way. If you were to ask your great great grandmother, they probably never put on a pair of pants in their life. That's a new thing in the earth. Read this. This this is a book called A History of Women in America, page 103. By modern standards, bloomers were hardly revealing when they first appeared. However, many people thought them in, indecent. Women who wore bloomers revealed their legs. Granted that these were covered with trou trousers, they were nevertheless legs from the knees to the ankles. In 1851, most ladies would not admit that they had legs, much less display them. Hold on, read that again. You heard that, sis? Read it again. In 1851, most ladies would not admit that they had legs, much less display them. So it's saying that we didn't even see women's legs back then. Everybody had on a dress. And it's because clothes put a spirit on you, sis. Have you ever seen a man that goes from, normally he wears boots and jeans and sweatpants and stuff like that. If you see him put on a suit, does he act different? Walk a little different? When you put dress clothes on, a suit and tie and stuff like that, it makes you carry yourself a little different, right? If I'm going to play basketball, I'm not going to have on a suit. I need to wear something that's going to allow me to do that. It's the same thing with this. That's why it says that a man shouldn't wear what a woman wears. Go back to that in 2025. Because of the spirit that comes with it. So the, the Most High God has a dress code specifically for us. All right? Read this again. Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment, for all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. So it says this is an abomination to the Lord thy God. You know what abomination means? What does it mean, sis? And I'm not putting you on the spot. I'm just trying to make sure that we die all because this is what we do, and I do it all the time. When people talking and we not 100% sure what they're saying, guess what we do? We should ask questions. Most of the time, most of us, not you, most of us just nod our heads and go with the flow. So that's why I asked you, did you know exactly what abomination meant? Get that for you. Mm -hmm. So the Bible actually defines itself. So it's okay if you don't know, we're going to let the Bible tell us. what. You know what it means? What's your name, brother? Nate? You know what abomination means, Nate? Something that God hates. There you go. Hold on. Sirach chapter 15, verse 13. The Lord hateth all abomination, and they that fear God love it not. So it says, they that fear God love it not. So if we say we love the most high God, we should hate everything he hates. We should love everything he loves. So you know what else are some of the other abominations that the most high God hates? So one is when a man dresses like a woman, or a woman dresses like a man. Give me um, homosexuality. Get that. We're going to go through the things that God hates. Because the Christian church teaches that God loves everybody. God can't love everybody because the Bible says God has enemies. Okay? Leviticus chapter 20 verse 13. If a man also lie with mankind as he lieth with a woman. So if a man lie down with another man in the same manner that he lies down with a woman. Both of them 
have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death. He says both of them have committed an abomination and they shall surely be put to death. Why? Because the wages of sin is what? It's death. So if we know that the Most High God pays us back for our sins with death, shouldn't we know what the sins are? What is sin? It's seven sins? It's, it's a lot more than that. Nate, what do you say? What is, what is the definition of sin? You don't know? That's fine. Let's see. So this is the definition of sin from the Bible, not according to what any man says. First John chapter 3 verse 4. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. So Jasmine, what's sin? Transgression of the law. Transgress meaning to go away from or to go to go back or to break. So breaking God's commandments is sin. Okay? So now we're gonna get some of the some of the commandments so you will know what these sins are so you can not commit them. Now, do you still go to church? What day you go to church on? You go to church on Sunday You go to church on Sunday and Wednesday. How long have you been going to church on Sunday? Probably your whole life, right? No? Four years, okay. You were, you were raised seven day Adventist, so you went to church on Saturday. Okay, let's see what the Bible says, because church teaches us, most churches, most African Americans, so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans go to church on Sunday, because that's what we've been taught here in America. Let's see what the Bible says, because we can't go along with the traditions of men that we've been taught here. We're gonna see what the Bible says, so we're gonna cut down Christianity. Now, real quick, the group over here, they think that they're doing a great thing by coming out preaching the word of God, but they're not preaching, thus saith the Lord. And I'm gonna show you two things real quick, just so you know. There are false prophets out here, and they look real similar, okay? So because you hear somebody preaching Jesus on the corner, doesn't mean it's preaching, thus saith the Lord. So first, give me the head cover. Read. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 11, verse one. Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Now I praise you, brethren, that you remember me in all things, and keep the ordinances as I delivered them to you. So it says, keep the ordinances, the laws, as I've given them, given them to you. Read. But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ. So it's going through the order. It says the head of every man is Christ. And the head of the woman is the man. The head of the woman is the man. And the head of Christ is God. And the head of Christ is God. So it just gave us the divine order according to the Holy Scriptures. It's God, it's Christ, it's man, then it's the woman. Okay? We in agreement there? Now watch what it says. Every man praying or prophesying. So every man praying or prophesying. Having his head covered dishonoreth his head. So the scriptures just said that if, you, if you're a man and you're praying or prophesying and your head is covered, you're doing what? Listen up. Read it again. Every, every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. Oh, you caught it that time. So if you're a man and you're preaching the word of God and your head is covered, what did the Bible just say you're doing? You dishonoring who? You dishonoring who's the man's head? Read it. Jesus Christ. So if you're across the street and you say that you're preaching the Most High's word, but your head is covered, you are dishonoring Christ. Now, some of our brothers and sisters might not know this, so we're going to read it again because we're not making this up. This is coming out the same Bible that they have across the street. This is the difference between being a Christian, a follower of, of Christ, and being in Christianity. For one, we're actually reading the Bible. We're not just out here talking out the side of our mouths. Read it again. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. So Jasmine, 
This is where we do an examination. Over here, we're teaching with the Bible open, praying and prophesying. Do you see any of these men with their head covered? No, you do not. Let's look across the street. The brothers who were preaching and prophesying over there, do you see all of their heads covered? Bring it out. Who's keeping the commandments? Bring it out. This side, all praises. Get Matthew 6 and 5. Right. Bring it out. And, and drop that real quick. Go back because I got I to gotta bring out another point. Real quick. Let me hold it. You got it? Because I don't want you to miss this. So the man has to have his head what? Uncovered. Okay? It's going to give us some more details and instructions. Verse 5. But every woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered dishonoreth her head. For that is even all one as if she were shaven. Okay, so I saw you, you caught that. I saw your face. So when a woman doesn't have her head covered, what is she doing? Read it again. Listen, this is only for knowledge purposes because a lot of these things we don't know. If nobody reads them or teaches them to you, we won't know. So it's never to break your spirit, all right? It's to build you up. First Corinthians 11 and 5. But every woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered dishonoreth her head. So the man has to have his head what? Covered. Uncovered. The woman is supposed to have her head what? Covered. So from here on out, sis, whenever you see these scriptures coming out, or if you're at home reading, praying, like the sister walking past, the sister's head is covered. So that's what you want, okay? Now, let's go back. Give me Matthew 6. <laughs> Say that again. Shalom says you got the fly, right? So if you got any questions, you can call that number whenever. If nobody answers, it's a number on the back. They'll call you back 24 hours a day, seven days a week. All right? Ma <clears throat> Matthew chapter 6, verse 5. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are. Oh, so the subject matter is prayer. Nate, you with me? The subject matter is prayer. It says, when thou pray, you should not be as the hypocrites. So now it's going to tell us about the hypocrites. Read. For they love to pray, standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets. They love to pray where? In the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen by men. So the scriptures are telling us that hypocrites pray on the, in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets. Why? So that they can be seen of men. That's right. So the whole purpose of that thing is to look as if you're being holy. You want to have the appearance of being holy, but not actually being holy. Go to Deuteronomy 7 and 6. Because we're going to show you what holy means. Nate, what does holy mean, Nate? Good answer. I don't know It's probably the best answer you can say out here. Because it's honest. Read. Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 6. Bring it out. For thou art in holy people unto the Lord thy God. So it says we are holy people to the Lord thy God. Go to Deuteronomy 1 and 1. Just so we can see who's the main subject of this book. Deuteronomy 1 verse 1. These be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel. So these are the words that Moses spake to who? All Israel on the side of Jordan in the wilderness. All right, so the book of Deuteronomy is Moses speaking to the Israelites. He's not speaking to the world, not the Chinese man, East Indian man, Arab man. He's speaking to the Israelites, all right? So now when we go to Deuteronomy 7 and 6, sister, who is Moses still talking to? Still talking to the Israelites. Nate, who is Moses talking to, Nate? Read it again. Nate, I need you to pay attention. One and one. De Deuteronomy chapter one, verse one. These be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel. Nate. Okay. Stay with me, Nate. So now we're going to Deuteronomy 7 and 6. Still speaking to all Israel, okay? Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6. For thou art in holy people unto the Lord thy God. 
the Lord thy God have chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. So the Most High God said that Israel is a special people. Are we equal to everybody else, Nate? No, you're not listening, Nate. Read it again. Because we're a special people. Are we equal to? Are we less than? We are what? Better than. We are above. Read it again. For thou art in holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God have chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. So because the Most High God chose us as a special people, that means that we should act like a special people. Special things look different from everything else. We should be able to look at one another and tell that it's something, something special. Since when you walked up, the brother said, out of the blue, he said, like that, sister. We were talking about the head covering. If you look around, you are the only sister out here with her head covering and your daughters. That's special. That's right. That's special, sister. The Most High God has chosen you. How many other people in your family keep the commandments? You see that? I'm the first person in my family to keep the commandments. And now it's my seed coming after me, Lord's will. Daniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.